Let us join together now in our opening prayer. To you, O Lord, we lift up our souls. O God, it is in you we trust. Make known to us your ways, teach us your paths. Lead us in your truth, for you are the God of our salvation. For you we wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love. Do not remember the sins of our youth or our transgressions. Lead the humble in what is right and teach the humble your way. All your paths are steadfast love and faithfulness. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massah and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Can you remember a time when your kids thought you knew all the answers? Or maybe you can remember a time when you thought your parents knew all the answers. Why is the grass green? Well, why can't I just eat chocolate for dinner? Why did my goldfish die? Some studies show that the average four-year-old will ask between, get this, 200 and 300 questions a day. No wonder the parents of preschoolers are exhausted. When I was a young mom, I thought I needed to have an answer for every question. And when I didn't have the answer, I learned I could ask a question back. That being, well, what do you think? Never admitting I didn't know the answer, just, well, what do you think? And man, did that lead to some really interesting discussions. In life, eventually, we all discover that our parents do not have all the answers. As we mature, we learn that none of us have all of the answers. For example, is God among us or not? We ask that question as if the answer should come to us once and for all, and we shouldn't have to ask it ever again. We ask the question with this kind of concept in our mind that if God proved his existence in some miraculous way, that we'd never have to ask for reassurance again. But the truth is, if we're honest, is that even if God did answer the question that way. Even if we did have some unbelievable first-hand experience that God is with us, 
it wouldn't take long. Down the road, we'd be asking the question again. In the Exodus passage, we read that what the Israelites really yearned for, what we really yearn for, is not God out there in the cosmos looking down uninvolved, but God with us. God in the messed up messiness of life. We ask again and again because, well, we need to know again and again. Is God among us now? And what about now? Now too? When we are in the middle of a relationship that is disintegrating, or when we receive that gut-wrenching diagnosis, or perhaps we feel that that financial security that we had built up is dwindling to nothing. In the middle of the devastating news of the death of loved ones. In the war zone, the earthquake, in the wildfires. We need to know that God is with us. When we are in confusion and isolation and fear, in the anger and betrayal and the mistakes that we so desperately wish we had not committed, but they cannot be undone. We need to know, is God with us? And somehow, somewhere along the way, we begin to think that that's not a question we can ask. We have to have faith. I would challenge that. I would say to ask that question is to let God know our need, to let God know that we yearn for God's presence, that it is God in whom we put our hope. To ask that question is to really journey into radical freedom, knowing that the God of both the wilderness and the water has compassion enough for us to hear our questions, to hear our searching for him as a desire for his love. To ask whether God is among us or not is to seek God with our hearts as much as our minds. And just like God answered the Israelites, we too will not be left thirsting for God's presence. So I want to encourage all of us this week as we journey forward into our lives to embrace that inner four-year-old that is still within us and to ask, to seek 200, 300 times a day, God, are you with me? We might be overjoyed in the answers we receive. Amen. I invite you to join with me now in our prayer for healing. Loving God, you call us by name. You know our hearts and our most secret thoughts. Your desire for us is to love you and to love one another as we love ourselves. It is such a simple calling, a simple commandment, and yet we fail to live it out. Guide us in our lives to the ways of your love. In a world of violence and fear, may we live into your ways of peace and hope. May we transform fear into awe. Help us to ponder your teachings to our ancestors with wisdom and understanding and live our lives in ways that are an example to others. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Our closing song today is Precious Lord. May God's peace be with you.